I'm all pro cornerback Richard Sherman, and when I'm not chasing receivers, I'm trying to keep up with my kids. That's why Alberto beef jerky is my favorite snack. Alberto is delicious, lean beef, slow cooked and seasoned to perfection, all natural and all delicious. Alberto beef jerky is protein packed, so I can keep up with my busy. Raiden, stop grabbing your sister's hair. Alberto beef jerky, you get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky, minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. <laughs> This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Coming at you, as I love to do, every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN in L.A. And, of course, nationwide over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM style. Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866 729 Three seven seven six. Got a lot of things to get into. Uh, Tannehill out for the year. What that means for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, of course, Martavis Bryant practicing with the Pittsburgh Steelers for the first time in two years. What that means for them. Obviously, um, some protests to get into in regards to Marshawn Lynch and Michael Bennett. Um, Ezekiel Elliott being suspended for six games. I'll give you my thoughts on that and why. First order of business, however, is to get into what can only be described as the tragedy that took place in Charlottesville, Virginia, this past Saturday. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a sports show. It will continue to be a sports show. We will be talking about sports uh, throughout this show, but it's important to first condemn and repudiate the things that we saw this weekend it transcends sports it transcends politics it speaks to the very humanity that exists within this country um white a white nationalist group the largest white nationalist group that we've seen in over a decade according to reports descended upon the city of charlottesville virginia um protesting the removal of the i believe the statue of robert e lee General Robert E. Lee, uh, obviously, uh, when you think about that history and what have you, the Confederacy, the Confederate flag and things of that nature is something they clearly support. They have been labeled neo-Nazis, appropriately so. One individual uh, that showed up was a 20-year-old individual from the state of Ohio who decided to fully accelerate his vehicle and literally ram into a crowd of people injuring 19 folks, killing a 32-year-old woman who was a paralegal. Of the 19 people injured in the crash, according to the reports, five were in critical condition, four in serious condition, six in fair condition, and four were in good health, according to officials. Overall, more were injured than just that. Ultimately, this individual... Um, James Fields Jr., 20 years of age, uh, was arrested, tried to put the car in reverse and escape the incident, but ultimately was arrested a couple of blocks away by police uh, where he is charged with second degree. What is it? Is it manslaughter or is it murder? I believe it's second degree murder. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it needs to be first degree. I don't understand why it's not first degree. I don't understand, you know, the, the 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 Department of Justice is exploring it and, you know, trying to decipher whether or not it's a hate crime. I don't know the suspense there either. But without question, this individual deserves to be charged with first degree murder. There is no way around that. As we sit here, understand a couple of things. Number one. There was the white nationalist group. However, there was a group there in opposition to their protest who were protesting themselves. They were protesting the white nationalist, the white supremacist group. And a vast majority of those protesting them happen to be white as well. So this clearly transcends race, although there were protesters of African-American descent there. One individual seen in the papers here 
with shackles around his neck and his wrist to sort of make his point. And in the aftermath of that, we saw the president of the United States, Donald Trump, speak. And while he condemned the acts of violence, he sort of lumped everybody into the same bowl, alluding to violence on both sides. He refused to condemn the neo-Nazis. He refused to condemn the racists. He refused to condemn the white supremacists. He refused to condemn all of those people until today. A couple of days later, after the heat swelled to astronomical proportions, apparently, Donald Trump came out and modified his position. The president of the United States said he condemned all acts of racism and beyond. That is where we are today. The country is clearly divided. We have the mayor of Charlottesville essentially saying, um, a matter of fact, I'll quote him accurately. If you dance with the devil, you don't change the devil. The devil changes you. That's what he said. That's a quote from Mayor Michael Signer of, of Charlottesville, Virginia. He was saying that about Donald Trump. He accused Donald Trump of emboldening the neo-Nazis, and making them feel comfortable enough. David Duke, former leader of the KKK, came out and spoke about how we are the ones that got you voted, President Trump. We are the ones that elected you in the office. It's because of us that you're the president of the United States. Don't forget us. That's the world we're living in right now. And all of that, brings into question two simple questions. Number one, how do you feel about Colin Kaepernick now? And number two, and more importantly, or just as importantly, a few days ago, we were wondering who, particularly amongst NFL owners, were going to stand up in defense of Colin Kaepernick and bring him on board to a team. And now that we sit here today, you know what the question is? Who can afford to stand against him? Because you see, if you're a National Football League owner, omitting Shad Khan, the owner for the Jacksonville Jaguars, from the equation, if you're an NFL owner, like President Trump, you're white, like President Trump, You're a billionaire. And isn't it fair to surmise that if you are a white billionaire owning the National Football League that you've got something to be concerned about right now? Because this notion that everybody, absolutely positively everybody, is against Colin Colin Kaepernick is a complete misnomer. Now make no mistake about it, you're listening to an individual that doesn't believe that Colin Kaepernick handled everything correctly. I think he's brought a lot of things on himself. Didn't seem to have a plan. Modified his position from kneeling to agreeing that he would stand. Wearing that that pig symbol on his socks. Wearing a Fidel Castro t-shirt. Going one in ten as a starter, completing less than 60% of his passes. In my opinion, the one thing that he did that was egregious was announcing to the world that he won't vote. There's a lot of things that Colin Kaepernick did to himself. But what could possibly warrant him missing out on a job in the NFL when he broke no laws, no acts of violence, didn't impede the games from being played, didn't do any of that other than exercising his constitutional rights and First Amendment privileges. I don't agree with everything about Colin Kaepernick. But it's a legitimate question. And it simply can't be ignored. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. I've got more to say on this subject, particularly with Marshawn Lynch and Michael Bennett both sitting for the national anthem. There's a lot to get into. I'm not going anywhere. 
I'd advise you to do the same. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Back with your calls and more in a minute. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Without venturing too much, again, there's a sports show. It's not politics, but, I mean, again, we're living in very, very sensitive times. Our president called the KKK, the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, supremacists, yeah, supremacists. Uh, he called them repugnant. But he started off the press conference by trying to talk about economic news. I mean, people, we have to wake up and realize the times that we're living in. I don't like the fact that Marshawn Lynch is sitting on a cooler eating a banana during the national anthem. I think that's very disrespectful. And I think that for somebody like him, who I happen to know, cares a great, great deal about the impoverished community from which he comes from, which is in Oakland, California. He loves those folks. I understand. But you still got to be careful because what you want is help. And what you want is people to put their eyes on that storm so they can make a contribution to that particular community as well as other impoverished communities throughout this nation so we can all uplift ourselves and each other. And that doesn't help. Michael Bennett, different matter. Socially conscientious, always. And took the position that he took because of what was transpiring this weekend. That's entirely different than Marshawn Lynch saying that for the better part of the last 11 years, he's been doing that while eating a banana while sitting on a cooler. Two different situations. But both care about their communities. Let's have a discussion. 866-729-ESPN. Carlton in Massachusetts. The floor is yours, buddy. Always love you calling into the show. Go ahead, man. So now, according to social justice warrior Max, anybody who protests removing whatever historical item potentially offends any social justice warrior snowflake, they should be ostracized and lose their jobs. Huh? That's what Max basically said today. He didn't basically say it. He did say it. He said that people that are on the wrong side of these debates should lose their jobs and be ostracized from society. Yeah, my only, my only, my only challenge with you on that, Carlton, and, and, and I could be wrong, but what I got from what Max was saying, he was talking about those who are racist who wish to do harm to a different segment of the populace because their views are not shared deserves that as opposed to somebody who's just protesting. In every one of these protests or rallies, okay, there is nut jobs on the right side, you know, the neo-Nazi white supremacist loons, and there's nut jobs on the left side, the communist, you know, take everybody's property away from them and imprison, imprison us if we disagree with you. The protest was about the removal of the Robert E. Lee st- statue, and people opposed it, and people... You know, people were for it. And and so that's what the protest was about. We want to make it about the one nutcase that decided to drive his vehicle into a bunch of people, killing some people, or turn it into a neo-Nazi rally. That's what the left wants to make this about. But that's not what the protest was about, okay? Well, let me I don't know if you saw the story the past few days, Stephen, A, of the Oregon uh, school board that decided to change the name of three schools in Oregon uh, because because the surname of the person who donated the land for the schools offends the social justice warriors. The surname of the people that donated the land is Lynch, okay, and that offends certain members of the African American community. See, I did not see that story. I'll look well, it up. Google I'll look it. it. It's I'll, all over I'll, all I'll, media. Okay. I mean, this is true. So I guess now Marshawn Lynch needs to change his name, lest it offends one of the social justice warriors, okay? Mm-hmm. This is ridiculous the, how, how the how this whole thing is going. The reason Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job is exactly the reasons you listed, the pig socks, the slave uh, returner badge, the equated uh, police badges, his, uh, his, uh, 
his wearing of the T-shirt of, of, of Castro, and most importantly, his comparing of the owner of the Ravens to uh, call it, uh, to, I mean, Leonardo, not, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio, DiCaprio. In, in Django and Samuel and Ray Lewis and Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, yeah, and the, the hero of the Ravens, you know, the retired you know, star of the Ravens, Ravens to Samuel Jackson, the guy who was feeding African-Americans to dogs in the movie. For but hold on, Carlton. Life. Hold on, Carlton. Listen to this now. I get where you're coming from, and I understand that because fair is fair. But the flip side to it is just like Van Jones had pointed out on CNN, which I applaud him for. He said that wasn't the day to sit up there and talk about both sides. When you had one side that came there, they were armed. They were in military. They were in military. They were they were donning military gear. They were armed, uh, and and obviously, you know, they were spewing a, 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 a lot of racist rhetoric in terms against blacks, in terms against Jewish folks, and the like. These are all the things that were said too, Carl. I'm sure the you're not advocating was armed that. armed and in military gear down there, too, Stephen A. It's just the left media doesn't post a lot of those pictures. The left was carrying tons of sticks, tons of what they could easily turn into a weapon down there. I'm saying that it's on both sides. We have crazies that try to take advantage of these situations on both sides. It is not just the people that were supportive of not removing that stat, uh, statue down there in Charlottesville that were armed and crazy. There are crazies on both sides. All right. and, and the day that, that if, if we allow Harry Edwards, okay, to dictate 53-man rosters on NFL teams, if somebody hires Colin Kaepernick, if they fire him, you know, eventually cut him for non-performance, are they going to be labeled a no, racist no, well, Carlton, slave Carlton, owner? Wait, wait a minute, Carlton. That's a different argument because let me tell you something right now. I think Dr. Ari Edwards has a point. Yeah, certainly there are a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of teams that don't need Colin Kaepernick as a quarterback. And certainly there are a lot of teams that could use him. You can't say 32 quarterbacks in the NFL are better than Colin Kaepernick. You can't say 32 reserves are better than Colin Kaepernick. And you can't say that he's just being left off of a team because of football, which you're not doing. You're pointing to the other things. But I would sit up there and ask you this question. I'm appalled at the fact that he said he wouldn't vote. You know what my position on that is. But outside of that, Carlton, what about the fact that the man has broken no laws, he's exercised his First Amendment privileges, and you've got individuals in the NFL who have been lawless? What about the fact that those individuals have been in the NFL, continue to be in the NFL, but somebody like Colin Kaepernick is being ostracized? Real quick, Carlton, go ahead. He divided his team. He divided the fan base. He turned home field advantage into a disadvantage for the 49ers. He's insulted. I would say Trip Kelly and Trent Baalke had a lot more to do with that, but go ahead. He, he's insulted people that support him like Ray Lewis. He's insulted in really bad, over-the-top ways. Owners who are considering hiring the guy. This is the last guy I would want on my NFL roster. And, and for Harry Edwards to get involved, 70% of the league, Stephen A., is African-American, making millions of dollars. This is not one of the uh, issues that, you know, uh, but it's not that, but, but, but it's not that it's an issue, Carlton, in terms of the numbers. It's an issue in terms of how folks are telling you and dictating to you how you can behave or how you should behave, even though you have an individual. What's the crime? The fact of the matter is that he might be inconvenient for that particular audience, but in another city, Carlton, he might work. He might galvanize those troops. He might not separate and he, them. And what he had an it? opportunity. Okay. Baltimore was thinking about hiring him, and what did he do? Not Miami. Crash not Miami. Not, not, not Miami. Not Miami. Baltimore, yes, but not Miami. No, but I, I said Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, Baltimore. Just Baltimore. What did he do? He trashed their star, and he trashed their owner. Well, his girlfriend did. His girlfriend, did. his girlfriend did, but that's on him. That's on him. It is on him. All and right. you know it. That's I did, why I just he said doesn't it. have a job. I just and said if we, if we allow outside vo vo voices to dictate who, who's on the rosters, you might as well just give it up. Legions of people will, got you. will forget about the NFL. Carlson, I got to run. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. I always appreciate your input. We disagree on this particular day with some of the issues that you brought up, but Carlton is always thoroughly informed, and he believes wholeheartedly what his position is, and I get that. There are a lot of people who believe that as well, and that's fine. I will tell you this. The president doesn't have any position talking about both sides. Not on a day like Saturday. Just doesn't. I will say that, and I'll leave it at that. 866-729-ESPN. More of your phone calls in a minute. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Something um, Carlton usually would know 
but just in case he didn't, he talked about Colin Kaepernick dividing the locker room. Reading from an article on ESPN by Nick Wagner, Friday, December 30th, 2016, last year, last December, it says in a season filled with controversy surrounding San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick's protest of racial inequality in the United States, Kaepernick apparently inspired many of his teammates. When the 49ers announced their team's awards Friday afternoon, Kaepernick was the recipient of the Lynn Eshmont Award given to the 49er who, quote, best exemplifies the inspirational and courageous play of Len Eshmont, an original member of the 1946 49ers team. The award, which was established after Eshmont died in 1957, is considered the most prestigious honor the players vote on. That's what we know. Here's a quote from his teammate, Tory Smith at the time. Colin has handled that situation better than anyone could have imagined. It hasn't been it hasn't been a distraction in our locker room, and it probably helped him open up to a lot of our team and our teammates better. He's been very open in communication about that as well as football. Said his other teammate, um, Danielle Kilgore, the center for the 49ers. This is last year, last December. Says, quote, after Cap stated his case today and seeing where he is coming from, I do stand with Cap when he says enough is enough against crime and the violence and discrimination and racism. I believe that enough is enough, but I can see why people would think it's bad with the national anthem and the military. Just thought that it was important to point that out in light of what Carlton had explained. Back to the phones we go. We have somebody on the line with us live from Charlottesville, Virginia, where the uh, mayhem tragedy took place this past weekend. Brandon in Charlottesville, you're live with Stephen A. Good afternoon. How are you? Oh, Stephen A., I'm, I'm not from Charlotte. I'm from Columbia. I'm I'm the Panthers fan. I no, no, no. I didn't, say, I didn't it. say where you was from. I just said they just said on the line where you were calling from. They said Charlottesville. My bad. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, that's fine. All right. I want you to know that um, I respect you and everything you do, and you're an admirable man, and you deserve a lot of credit for that. But I genuinely disagree with you um, on your sentiment about Tiger Woods as why he shouldn't be a top 50 athlete, and I'm about I to got, wrap I got, it all I, around. No, 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 no. You're not going to wrap it around because I'm not talking about Tiger Woods today. Today I can okay, give a damn about Tiger Woods. I need you to give me something else. Kaepernick, okay, Ezekiel then. Elliott, take my, be my guest. But I'm not interested in Tiger Woods today. Not today, but go ahead. Okay, then at least I'll let you know I'll erase that, but that's where this is where my comments stem from. Now, Rachel Dozell, I don't know if you remember her from two years ago, but she was a white lady masquerading as a black woman who was the head of the um, the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. And when she came out about that, there was a lot of there was a lot of black people who didn't really necessarily like it. And I thought, I guess it was kind of weird or something like that. But I looked at her, I'm like, this is a white woman trying to help the culture. Now you fast forward it two years later, Heather Hare. This was a lady who was protesting, and she wasn't there to identify with what her ethnicity is as it pertains to her kind of white, but she was there to identify with the counter-protesters as it pertains to what's right. And that's a lady who's a martyr who died for, you know, essentially black people. Because Robert E. Lee, she, uh, he was a, a Confederate general who was in favor of the slavery. So I look at the fact that she died and it was a white lady. I think that's a big deal. I, I think, think that's a, a very big deal. I don't think I could have stated more eloquently, my man. I think that's a great, great, fantastic call on your part. I really do. Oh, yes, sir. I have no disagreement. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just feel like, you know, what she did, she... Yeah. I mean, not that she sacrificed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she was out there. She was out there uh, uh, fighting for what was right. She really, really was and paid for it with her life because of this one individual that 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 went haywire. Appreciate the call, Brandon. Thank you so much, man. Let's go to Jason in Brooklyn. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jason? How are you? Stephen A., a real pleasure to talk to you. You are the top and you're unlike anyone else on the radio. I want to make three very quick points about Colin Kaepernick and the situation, uh, the way it's being reported. One is they talk about how the owners are going to take a big hit on their bottom line. They think these owners are small business owners, like they own a hardware store or something. I think it's safe to say these are all billionaires who maybe their NFL franchise represents 10% of their entire holdings. If they lose the, if they lose the whole uh, farm on the franchise, I don't think they'll even be any the worse for it. A uh, second point is that do you know who Madeline Brown is? Madeline Brown was Lyndon Johnson's uh, mistress, and she testified that on the night before the Kennedy assassination at Clint Murchison's house, who was the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, that was where the – 
big uh, meeting was held, including the mafioso and various FBI and Richard Nixon and Lyndon Johnson were all there to conspire against the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This was done at the owner of the Dallas Cowboys' house. My third and final point is that well, I need to re- I need to research that because you know you, please, you're talking about you're talking about murder and you're mentioning the Dallas Cowboys in the same breath. I have no knowledge that what you're saying is remotely true or anything like that, but I will look it up. Go ahead. What's your third point? Thank you. Um, and it's Madeline Brown, Lyndon Johnson. I'll look Johnson's it up. Mistress. We got yeah, it. Uh, thank, thank you. See, my third point is that I believe the best term it should be blacklisting, not blackballing. Blacklisting refers to sort of more like what happened to the communists. And the kind of, you know, where Hollywood actors in the 50s uh, with the McCarthy hearings, they were That's blacklisted, n- not true. blackballed. And everyone keeps saying blackballed, and I believe the term should be blacklisted. Otherwise, Stephen A., you are the man. You're the only one who has the knowledge that you have. And I'm a big fan of what you do. Thank you. And, and, and keep up the good work, and God Thank bless. You. Thank you. Thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Let's go to Jeffrey in Brooklyn. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Hey, how's it going, Stephen A.? Right. I wanted to ask you, how come it hasn't been spoken about in regards to what Donald Trump said just a few weeks ago about how um, he wanted the police to add a little bit more um, excessive force, but then at the same time retracted his statement. Well, that's been spoken about. That's been spoken about on numerous occasions on numerous platforms. But what are you supposed to do? This stuff, this new stuff happening every day. After he said that, you had the North Korea issue. You had more on a Russian investigation. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's, it's right. something new every day. Right, but, but but by him saying that, and then on top of that, speaking out against Kaepernick just a few months back, doesn't that all? That's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's indicative of the kind of mentality that people feel or suspect he may have, or or, or you know, or for, or the kind of climate that exists out there in the world today. Like I said on first take today, and I appreciate the call, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. What I said on first take today, I'll reiterate again. Um, what I saw Saturday is just a reminder that folks need to be careful. There's an uprising, per se. Just like the mayor of Charlottesville pointed out, you know, they've been, these folks feel emboldened. And and they ain't putting on sheets anymore. Either. They're coming out front and center to let you know exactly who they are and how they plan on coming at you. Now, Carlton in Massachusetts can sit up there and say, it's coming from both sides. That's hard for me to say. I didn't, I, you know, again, but, you know, now you're talking about the leftist media. Well, that's something that you constantly hear from conservatives. They, they, may, they may have a point. There sometimes I believe they're absolutely right about that. Because we do, you know, the media is supposed to be objective. Now, you're supposed, you can be as subjective you want in expressing what you express, but it's supposed to be after you objectively and neutrally disseminate the facts. And there's a lot of people in the media that are not doing that. So conservatives that make that point have a point. But it doesn't absolve the white nationalist and white supremacists. It doesn't absolve them. It doesn't fog or camouflage their intent. And those who stand up against them are clearly standing up for justice. For all. And that's what's paramount to understand here. That's what's important. That's what we have to recognize. 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. I didn't forget Ezekiel Elliott and his six-game suspension. I've got something to say about that, too. That, Kaepernick, and more up next live on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel. Lady, before I get back to the phones, let me reiterate what I said um, over the weekend on Sports Center and and beyond the six game suspension that Ezekiel Elliott received is not something we should have a problem with. From the standpoint that if you find yourself in that situation where five different incidences 
occur over a span of, you know, three separate occasions, five days, you got yourself a problem. July 17th, July 19th, July 21st of 2016, a woman alleges that Ezekiel Elliott put his hands on her, bruised her, struck her, and engaged in some form of domestic violence. Local law enforcement officials did not arrest Ezekiel Elliott. Local prosecutors didn't prosecute him because they said the evidence was inconsistent and the cooperating witnesses were non-existent. The NFL put forth this due diligence, investigated for a period of a year, blah, 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 blah. The reason I say blah, blah, blah is because here's what I believe. I don't believe the NFL or any sports league should be in the business of determining one's guilt or innocence for the rest of us. When the NFL suspended Big Ben Roethlisberger after he was accused of sexual assault in 2010, he was never arrested, never indicted. But what they said was, we don't know what happened. But we know you were involved. And your involvement alone sullies and stains the shield. And we're going to let you and anybody else like you know that is not something we're going to tolerate. You don't stain the shield. That is not what went on here with Ezekiel Elliott. The case, in terms of the NFL's investigation, lasted significantly longer. And when it was finalized nearly a year later, the NFL basically said, we think you're guilty as hell. That's not talking about the shield. That's not talking about selling our name. That's not telling us you're trying to protect your brand even though to some degree it could be construed that way. What it's really saying is the NFL has determined what the local authorities in Columbus, Ohio, didn't. And that is that he is guilty of this. Or to use their words, more likely than not, guilty of this. And that is where I have a problem with the National Football League. That is where I have a problem. Now, in the, in fairness, their attitude is, look, part of the reason it dragged on so long is because the representatives for Ezekiel Elliott wasn't as cooperated, cooperative as they could have been, which in defense of the National Football League could be the same thing attributed to Tom Brady. And they're ruling against him because if Tom Brady was as forthcoming and was as cooperative as Commissioner Goodell in the league office wanted him to be, then – they would have exercised more leniency. I guess that's what they're saying. But it just seems to me that with Ezekiel Elliott, they're trying to be judge, jury, and executioner. And I don't want the NFL or any sports league in the business of doing that because they're all about business and their bottom line. How can they be trusted? That's my problem. That's what's bothering me right now. But I still think Ezekiel Elliott should have been suspended just sooner. And it should have been strictly about you stained our league. And that's that. It shouldn't have been you trying to be a jury and a judge and an executioner telling us what we should believe is guilt or innocence. I don't trust the NFL or any sports league with that. I just don't. Nick, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Stephen? All right, go ahead. Listen, I, first of all, I want to lead off. What happened this weekend in Charlottesville was despicable, and it's a stain on our American society. But how I view what sickens me even more is we have put symbols blindly on our on our history from the Civil War. We're 200 years removed that, and we're placing many times today. People have mentioned that Robert E. Lee fought for slavery. There's plenty of historical context that actually says he was opposed to slavery. He went to school at West Point. He was one of the top five cadets to ever graduate with no demerit, and yet somehow we have labeled him as a racist and a slave owner. There's actually many documentations where he supported the emancipation of slaves all over the place, and we need to educate ourselves. And it's not so much we just need to stop putting blindly these our 
our ideas and context is on these symbols that are part of our American culture. Well, you're right about that. You're right about that. What I have, what I'm opposed to what you're saying, Nick, however, is that mm-hmm. you put it on just the people who are vehemently against him. There are educators in our system throughout this country that don't do and don't put forth a diligent job of making oh. sure that all the facts are out there. So if oh, people if, if, if people are there agree. and they are giving a certain set of information, then that's what they have to go by. And that's what we have to be careful about. Completely agree. Completely agree. It is our education system, and we need to be better. And, and by the way, by the way, Nick, just one other point I'd like to add while you're on the line. And if individuals out there are protesting on his behalf, then rather than stand up and spewing racial rhetoric and anti-Semitic rhetoric, maybe you should make the, not you, Nick, meaning you, but I'm talking about right. protesters on that side. Maybe, I understand. I understand. maybe you should have gone out of your way to say, you know what? He wasn't that. He fought on behalf of minorities. He fought on behalf okay. of this. See, a lot of times they don't do that. You have a lot of people that take that incendiary position and don't give a damn. So again, if that's the case, what was their intent? And, and that's what you oh, have to I, measure to as I, well. I, yeah, oh, I completely agree, Stephen. And I don't I think what they did was disgusting and vile and on and you know, I and got it you. only it only perpetuates that nasty rhetoric that we've come to believe. And you know, and I just want to make sure we protect we educate ourselves as Americans and protect our American culture, you know, and again, slavery was a part of the Civil War, but it's not all the facts, like you said, and it's our responsibility, you know, as Americans to make sure and on our education system and on uh, mentors and elders. But I completely agree with you, Stephen, and I want to thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Take it easy. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Got a lot of stuff to get into with our number two, Ezekiel Elliott and his suspension. Colin Kaepernick, some of the protests, Marshawn Lynch, Michael Bennett. Will others come forward? Is, should there be more pressure on the owners to get Colin Kaepernick back into the NFL? Or should we follow Carlton's advice and say to hell with them? He was a divisive figure, and that is that. So much more to get into, plus Ryan Tannehill being out for the year, Martavius Bryant being back with the Steelers. So much, so little time, but we'll find it. Stephen A. Smith Show, hour number two up next. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. It's me, the little voice in your stomach. And as you can tell by my musical selection, I have impeccable taste. So I won't settle for anything but the most tasty snack. All natural Alberto beef jerky. It's lean beef, slow cooked and seasoned to perfection. All natural and all delicious. So listen to the little voice in your stomach. Indulge my great taste and feed me some all natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Our number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour or so over the airways of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. Lots to continue to get into in regards to Ezekiel Elliott, in regards to Colin Kaepernick, in regards to uh, the protest that turned into a riot, turned into mayhem, and the killing of one woman, and the Injuries to many others, over 20 folks. Uh, That's stuff that we're getting into from a pure football perspective. Ryan Tannehill, it's a fish. He's on the injured list. He's out for the year. Um, And as a result, people are asking the question whether or not they're going to be fine with Jay Cutler. Well, first of all, Miami wasn't that good to begin with. Last year, they made the playoffs for the first time in seven years. Secondly, I love Jarvis Landry. I love Jay Ajayi. Kenny Stills being there, too. Um, those are weapons, requisite weapons that uh, the Miami Dolphins have at the disposal. Still don't think it's going to be good enough because they'll eventually be a wild card. And by virtue of them being a wild card, they'll have to compete in the, with the AFC North, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Baltimore. They'll have to compete with a, a you know, uh, an improving AFC South because it's not just about Indianapolis and Andrew Luck anymore. You got two quarterbacks in that AFC South that Andrew Luck's got to compete with now. Deshaun Watts is going to be starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. And Marcus Mariota, in case y'all don't know, he can play. I mean, we talk so much about Jameis Winston, mad respect for him, and Jameis Winston respects the hell out of the kid. 
respects the hell out of him. I interviewed Jameis Winston last week on television. He really, really respects Marcus Mariota. So let's give credit where credit is due. Let's give respect where it's due. We still ain't sold on Jacksonville because of Blake Borders, but you look at Mariota in Tennessee, along with their running game with Henry and, 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 and DeMarco Murray, you look at, at Houston, that defense is going to be big time. J.J. Watt returns. Jadavion Clowney came out of hiding and showed up last year, you know, justifying his number one overall pick status, at least to some degree. Can't ignore that. He still got DeAndre Hopkins. He still got Lamar Miller. Houston might not be a joke. And then, of course, you got Indy, still problems with the offensive line, still problems with their defense, still somewhat of a degree of problems with their running game, with Andrew Luck being turnover prone. So that's how I look at it. I think Miami could be on the outside looking and not making the playoffs again. So we got that out the way. Then we look about Martavis Bryant. I've said it many times, I'll say it again. I believe in this kid, I believe in his talent. I think he's big time. And I think him with Antonio Brown, Ladarius Green, and Le'Veon Bell, once he comes out of his holdout and 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 and, and the rest of the crew. If Martavis Bryant could stay off the weed, I think the Steelers are going back to the AFC Championship game. Well, they'll lose to New England again. I hope I'm wrong because I'd love for them to beat New England because I'm a Steelers fan. But we just don't know right now. We just don't know. In the NFC, by the way, listen, I don't know what all the suspense is. I don't know why everybody's acting like Atlanta can't go back. I believe they can. Look, let's call it what it is. The Atlanta Falcons should be Super Bowl champions right now. That was a complete and utter collapse last year in the Super Bowl. Up 28-3 to and you blow that? Look, that's what happened, y'all. And who they have at running back? And when Julio Jones is one of their wideouts, with Sanu and the crew, with the defense improving and getting some of the personnel back they didn't have last year, I got news for you. The Atlanta Falcons should be the favorites to come out of the NFC. Not Seattle, not Carolina. Damn sure ain't Dallas. And now that Dallas won't have Ezekiel Elliott for at least the first four to six weeks of the season, I'm picking the Giants to win the NFC East. No, I do not believe in Philadelphia. No, I do not believe in the Redskins. I just don't. So that's where I'm at with it. No matter how we slice it. 866-729-ESPN. Let's go to Markel. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Markel? How's it going, Stephen A.? It's an mm-hmm. honor to finally meet you, uh, you, talk to you at least. Thank you. But uh, I, I want to get to the point with uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I got an issue with how everybody's coming down on him. I got to, I got the chance to read the report, uh, look at the uh, pictures, and listen to the video, to uh, the, 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 the audio call to the, the police. Uh, anyway, my whole problem with it is I don't really see the true domestic violence that you guys would uh, most likely uh, uh, consider com- domestic violence. Like I don't see a a punch or, that, or hit or anywhere or anything like that. I can literally grab my girl on her arm and it will leave that similar type of bruise on her arm. It just, some people are just that 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 type of fragile. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop right there! Stop right there! Stop, stop! 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 I get where you're coming from, but she didn't say he just grabbed him. She showed those remarks. She showed those marks on Twitter and beyond, and said that's where they came from in terms of him grabbing her, but. She never said he did not strike her. Okay, but where was the the evidence of the strike? I understand. I understand that point. She never went to the she never went to the hospital. She never did try to uh, to actually get examined for the well. There were hold on, there was an examination of her, and according to the authorities, and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not I'm not taking. Listen, I'm not I'm not poo pooing what you're saying. I'm saying to you that they did examine her, and they did say that her marks were consistent with what she alleged her parents were involved along with others. And so there was a preponderance of evidence collaborating or, 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 you know, coupled with the lack of cooperation that the NFL says Ezekiel Elliott's representatives accorded them, and that's what you have with the suspension. The NFL is claiming, Markel. 
where was the where was that same cooperation when it came to the police? They said nobody came forward, but when the NFL started to actually do some type of investigation, they want to come forward. That means that this is nothing more than what Ezekiel Elliott explained it to you, be. You're, not, no, you're, 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 you're missing, way. and I'm telling you, you're missing the point. You're talking to deaf ears. Here's why. You're missing the point. Roger Goodell in the National Football League has complete discretion because it was granted to him by the Players Association with the latest collective bargaining agreement. They're saying to you they don't have to have proof. What they have to have is enough that in their mind says them it's more says to them it's more likely than not that you committed the what what is alleged that you have committed and in their eyes that's what they're saying the less the the, the burden of proof is considerably lessened for the National Football League than it is for the local authorities anywhere and so that's why they made the the the, the they took the position that they took. Because they're saying, Zeke Lelly, you found yourself in this situation. This is how it looks to us. That combined with your lack of cooperation justifies the six-game suspension. What do you say to that, Markel? I, I, I say, I say, I, I have, I, have, I don't, I, I want to see. Do you have an issue with the fact that they can say somebody can literally accuse anyone of anything? Yes. And really have a, you have a, they can accuse anyone of anything. No evidence, really. And then it can just pretty much. Well, get well, away well first of all, first of all, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I'm not going to say no evidence. What I am going to say to you is this: that I have a problem with the NFL trying to be judge, jury, and executioner. I don't have a problem with the six game suspension because the six game suspension could have simply been you found yourself in this situation. The mere fact that you're in the news for being accused of this is your damn problem. We're not going to allow you to make it ours. Keep be mindful of the company you keep and move on. If the NFL had said that and still suspending them six games, I would have no issue with it. What I have an issue with is the NFL is literally trying to say, Ezekiel Elliott, we believe you're guilty when the local authorities didn't do that, which means that the NFL is trying to take it upon themselves to be judge, jury, and executioner, and that's my problem with it. Hey, you got my you got my you, – I'm on your side on that point, man. You got, right. it, you got it right there, bro. Take it but, easy, bro. Take it easy. I appreciate the call. Markel, I get your point. Because what Markell is saying, ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure we defend Markell in this sense. What he just called up and said, he's not advocating putting your hands on a woman. What he's saying is, what if she were hitting him or something like that and all he did was grab her? And the marks that are on her body are consistent with a grab as opposed to being struck. What then? That is a question that a lot of men out there have. What is your answer? 866-729-ESPN. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, All right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors Mm -hmm. (laughs) and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how... If you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Dodgers have made baseball boring. You're just waiting for the postseason. And Bryce Harper and the Washington Nationals, you thought had the best shot to knock him off, and then all of a sudden we look at Bryce Harper. Uh, listen, I know it was raining. I know, you know, thank God that the report showed no, you know, the MRI showed no torn ligament damage and stuff like that with Bryce Harper. But, I, I mean, you know, applaud him for hustling, you know, in that rain and all of that stuff. Applaud him for that. But in the end, what it comes down to is that, you know, damn, you know, it's raining out there. NB, MLB's going to get their 162 games in or whatever. Cover the bag. Throw an extra dust on it. Do something. So a guy ain't running to the base and then sliding on the base. Uh, I mean, do something. Might have been wise. That ain't what happened. And luckily, Bryce Harper may be back for the postseason. Luckily. Omar, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up? Hey, what's going on, Stephen A? Talk to me. Um, I, I want to get your take on the, uh, in my opinion, the NFL has botched the two biggest cases they had with the two biggest stars on the two biggest teams, you know, in the league, which is Tom Brady 
and that whole debacle with the plate gate, you know, whatever. I mean, and I'm assuming these guys are, you know, innocent until proven guilty, like, obviously. But And now you have Ezekiel Elliott, who's the biggest star right now, despite what everybody's opinion might be, of the Dallas Cowboys, who is who are probably the second. My man, well, stop right there. Maybe, stop right there. You've been on the phone for 30 seconds. You still haven't gotten to your point. You don't have all day, bro. Go ahead. Get so to your I, point. So, like, my point is, given, like, how bad they've handled these these uh, investigations or suspensions, like, in your opinion, what's the state of the commissioner's office and the Players Association, like, moving forward? Well, the Players I Association mean, looks considerably worse than the league office. And the reason why is because for every question mark that we have pertaining to the power that the league office wields, who gave it to them? It was the Players Association. Because you capitulated. Not only did you give them that power, you gave them a 10-year agreement. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I mean, you just don't sign agreements for that lengthy period of time in this day and age because so much could change in a flash. But that's what the Players Association gave up. And as a result, it empowered the commissioner in ways that we haven't seen a commissioner empowered before. Roger Goodell in the commissioner's office literally has the power uh, to be judge, jury, and execution at this particular moment in time. Now, I'm not accusing them of being irresponsible when it came to Ezekiel Elliott. The, ther- the, the, the investigation was long and thorough, and as, 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 as one of my boys pointed out to me, and accurately so I might add, my boy Champ, he said, hey, he texted me, 13-month investigation, okay? Something is not right. Six games may actually be a gift. And that's a valid point. It might be a gift because what the NFL may know may be even worse than we suspect. But guess what? It still doesn't change my position because whether the penalty, whether the penalty deserves to be more severe or less severe, my position is the NFL shouldn't be in a position to decide that. The NFL should not be in a position to be judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to legal matters. You should simply be restricted to saying, we believe you have impugned the integrity of the shield. You have compromised us and our bottom line by finding yourself in this position. So because of that alone, We're suspending you for six games. Oh, it's not fair. It's not fair. That ain't right. That ain't right. The NFL is perfectly within its right to say, that's your damn problem. Even if Ezekiel Elliott is being framed, the NFL has every right to sit up there and say, we didn't choose your ex-girl or whoever your friend was that's framing you. That's your problem. They actually could get away with saying that. Am I right, John? Am I right, Nuno? They could actually get away with saying that. That's your problem. Be careful about the company you keep. You in a car. Somebody's got a concealed weapon in the car. You driving. That's your damn problem. You were minding your business in that strip club. When some girl accused somebody of sexually assaulting her in a bathroom or whatever. That's your damn problem. Shouldn't have been there. You out hanging with the fellas. And a whole bunch of them are smoking weed. You just you just chilling with it in your pocket like Zach Randolph was doing or in your bag. That's your damn problem. NFL has a right to take that attitude. I have no problem with it. Zero. My mama. God rest her wonderful soul. Always used to say to me, why you? I get pulled over for a speeding ticket. Why you? I get cited for a parking ticket. Why you? I'm getting in an argument at work or something. Or I don't like something about my boss did to me. Why you? That's my mama's first question. Why of all the people they could point to, you find yourself in this situation. What you do? That's what the NFL does. That's what the NFL could do and would be perfectly within their right. What they don't have the right to do is to sit around and conduct the type of investigation that positions them to turn around and say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we think he's guilty. 
They don't have a right to do that. That's not that's not right. There's something morally reprehensible about a business who's all about their bottom line and about dollars being in a position to say it, A, and then B, having the audacity, the unmitigated goal to actually try and pull that off. When they suspended Big Ben Roethlisberger years ago, they said, you sullied our name. This thing they did with Ezekiel Elliott, they said, we don't care what Columbus police and and, and a district attorney did. Let me tell y'all something. We think he's guilty. That's what the NFL was saying. And that is where I believe they crossed the line. Dwayne, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Stephen A., how you doing, man? Oh. Hey, Stephen A., thanks for taking my car, so I appreciate it. No problem. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Stephen, man, I just want to ask you, do you think with what happened this past weekend – up here in um, in Virginia, if, do you think that more players should protest? Because let me tell you, yes. Something. Okay, you do. I, they, they. I think they should, man. Let me tell you. Um, I got a family member that's on the team right now. And he's been playing for three years, and I talked to him this morning before he went to practice, and I told him, I said, man, please talk to you. I know I don't want you to risk your job and none of that, but I please talk to your teammates about doing something because this stuff is affecting people actually out here. You get what I'm saying? Like my daughter asked me this morning when I dropped off for school, like are the bad people coming back up here? You know I got, I, like, I got a better, I got a better question for you the way. Well, listen, I, I, I appreciate the position that you've mentioned about your daughter and my heart goes out to you. Um, I'm a dad myself and that definitely resonates, but I would also tell you that it's nothing new. You know, that we came out of the womb just like they came out of the womb, knowing that we got this stuff to be worried about. So that's a given. Yeah. The other point that I would say yeah. to you is this stuff. And I said this on I said this. Um, you know, where are the other players? And it's not just we look at the football players. How about the basketball players? After all, they're not NFL players. They have guaranteed contracts. Don't hear enough from them. I, we did hear from LeBron I, James. But I haven't heard from you. I, I, I think the basketball players are going to do something. But you I, know what? I wish the white players and like good point. You know what I mean? The how white about Tom Brady? How about stuff. Tom Brady? Yeah. How about Aaron Rodgers? Well, in fairness, Howie Long's children, who both went to Virginia, if I remember correctly, Chris and Kyle Long spoke out against this, and I'm not surprised by that because Howie Long's a great man, and the fact that his sons would be socially conscious is just it's, it's no surprise to me at all. Man, I love that man. Always have. Always been good to me. Howie Long. I'm a huge fan. I got to go, Dwayne. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Again, I was going to speak about LeBron James. I was. I just brought that up for a reason. I played my final take. I did my final take on first take on ESPN this morning. I'm on every morning with my man Max Kellerman and Molly Kerum. And both Max and I did a final take. I'm going to play you mine. When we return, I want you to hear what my final take was. It was about LeBron James. I promise you, you'll enjoy listening to it. And I'm anxious to get your response once you hear it. Listen up. Don't touch that dial. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Sirius XM Channel Lady. On first take today, during my final take, Max Kellerman did an outstanding final take himself, but so did I. Uh, Well, that's not outstanding. I'll leave that for you to judge. His was fantastic. I'm saying that about his. I'll leave your your judgment about what my final take was like. This aired this morning. We do the show live, and I did it live, but I had it taped so you could hear it, my radio audience. This is me in regards to LeBron James. And these protests speaking out this morning on first take, my final take. Listen up. LeBron James has taken a few hits lately, including from yours truly. He just lost in the NBA Finals. There's a debate as to whether he's been supplanted as the best player in the world. He's got a star as a teammate who doesn't want to be his teammate any longer. And at times has seemed perfectly okay with it, as long as his social media following continues to swell. But no matter what you're inclined to utter about LeBron James, make sure 
actual applause is attached to it because this young man speaks out when necessary. He's almost always on time and rarely do we sense a speck of hesitation in his willingness to do so, which is more than we can say for most of the other NBA players these days. When it's time to take a stand, we first must applaud LeBron, who just called out President Trump this weekend after the mayhem in Charlottesville. But where were the other stars? We don't have to mention names on this particular day. But the point needs to be made. If the NFL, saddled with player contracts that can be minimized or flat out eradicated, is suffocated with an abundance of athletes brave enough to speak out on their own accord without being prodded or pushed into saying or doing something, why is it that NBA players with guaranteed non-figure contracts seem so petrified to stand up and speak out until LeBron James says or does something first? Last time I checked, the NBA is not marching lockstep with the NFL. While everyone from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to Ravens coach John Harbaugh walked around swearing Colin Kaepernick wasn't being blackballed, it was NBA Commissioner Adam Silver who stated publicly that he supports players who are socially conscientious, as did Dallas Mavs owner Mark Cuban. So if you're an NBA player, educated, aware, and caring, where is your voice? Why does it seem like everyone is waiting to see what the hell LeBron James does first. No doubt branding is a part of it, of course. For someone, reasons, for some unknown reason, folks who are already set for life are too busy worrying about potential fallout. True courage doesn't appear to be a part of the equation. And what a shame it is. For nothing epitomizes weakness than someone who has very little to fear, yet still is scared all the damn time. Bottom line, we can accuse LeBron James of being many things, but scared isn't one of them. Maybe that's why he truly is the king after all. That was my take on LeBron James this morning. I felt it was necessary to make that point. Because in a day and time where we have literally athletes worth $100 million, $200 million, $300 million, Everybody seems reluctant to step up, to just give a voice to something. You got a whole bunch of people here sitting around going off about how President Trump, it took him two days to speak out against racism and neo-Nazism and things of that, na- and things of that nature. And certainly I'm not trying to remotely imply that anybody particularly professional athletes should be held to the same standard as the president of the United States. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But with Twitter, with Facebook, with Instagram, with social media being the arm that it is and all that you have at your disposal because of it. It wasn't noticeable to y'all that so many of these guys so quick to talk about everything else when it's comfortable couldn't be found. Haven't heard a word from them. And that it takes LeBron James to speak out first. Think about that. LeBron James gets on my damn nerves sometimes. I think he's passive aggressive. I think at times he could be a bit too calculated or manipulative in his own ways. All of that stuff is true. But it doesn't omit the fact that he's a good man that he's a great, great, great athlete and player, that he's accomplished a great great deal, that he is a quintessential role model of the highest order, and that he has never done anything to shame us. This man was on the cover of Sports Illustrated at age 17. He has been in the NBA for more than 14 years. He is 15 years removed from that photo on Sports Illustrated where the expectations of the world were thrown on his shoulders. He's not just matched them, he's exceeded those expectations. And he's done so in a fashion, never in trouble with the law, never messes up. Too damn good to be true, to be honest with you at times. Biggest thing he's done was the decision in going to Miami. Outside of that, He's been a role model. And when it comes to these issues, Trayvon Martin. 
Eric Garner. Kid that was killed in Cleveland. Talk about gun control. Taking a political stance in support of Hillary Clinton. It doesn't have to be Hillary Clinton. It's that fact that he was willing to take a stance. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Get back to the phones before we get on out of here for today. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Patrice in the Bronx. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Patrice, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Stephen. Thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, Sorry, buddy. I got to go to the um, I want to touch on a couple of subjects and make it quick. Um, last week, I asked a question. Um, to challenge a caller about Colin Kaepernick, say if he was the owner and he came to lose money and profit by having a fan base, you know, go away, um, would he take the owner if he was a black owner and Colin Kaepernick was white? Don't put it on the other hand. Um, right now, I want to put a light at it that um, colored people are planning to boycott and protest. Not everyone, but there are many out there that plan to do so, and they still are not taking Colin Kaepernick, even though he's a better player than players on their roster. Not all of them, not all the teams, but there are some teams that have quarterbacks who are worse than Colin Kaepernick and still will lose money to keep them off their teams. Well, that's a given because that's the world that we're living in here because you're going to have folks uh, who will support the NFL – but who are striding in their positions uh, against what Colin Kaepernick stood for, or what he, or rather, what he knelt for, or what he knelt, or what he knelt against? Uh, they're opposed to it. They are offended by it, and they're going to act the way that they act. But there's a lot of other supporters out there to offset that particular individual or individuals uh, who will be uh, advocates of keeping him out of the NFL. Got to run. I appreciate the call, Chris in New Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. How are you, buddy? I'm all right. Um, Go ahead, man. Yeah, just want to say, bro, you were one of my favorites out there. Love your points. Always very cogent. Uh, On Zeke Elliott, I'm with you, dude. I feel the exact same way. I think it's really shallow and phony to the NFL to be judge and jury. They have every right because they're a company and they have their own business, but they're not doing it for all the right reasons. It's to save face and to just decide who's in and who's out because it looks good for them. It's weak as far as I'm concerned. I'm not a Cowboy fan. I just think Right is right, and it's just like the Ray Rice issue. They didn't do anything until the video came out. It was minimal, but then public outcry, so I don't dig it. Well, listen, it's not right to wait until a video, but we have two eyes for a reason. What you see actually has more of a profound impact than what you read or hear in most occasions. Whether we like it or not, that's just a human reality. But I think when it comes to the National Football League, again, what I have a problem with most with Ezekiel Elliott is that suspended for the six games, no problem but suspend him because he sullied the name of the brand by finding himself in this situation. Don't try to attach guilt or innocence because the bottom line is is that we can't trust your judgment. Let's say for the sake of argument, be the devil's advocate. What if they actually believed that Ezekiel Elliott was innocent? With the uproar about him based on what was in that police report, is it beyond the realms of comprehension that the NFL would still have suspended him to appease the public because of what it looks like? Chances are yes. So the point is you shouldn't be in the business of judge, jury, and executioner. You should leave that to the authorities. What you should be doing is saying our interest is the shield. And anybody who finds themselves in a position that sullies our shield, we're going to deal with you no matter how you look at it. I'm in agreement, man. I think, um, and one last, if I may, with regard to Colin Kaepernick, I think what the dude did was admirable last year. He saw a problem. He spoke his piece. I also feel, though, that no one's under an obligation to give him a job if they feel that he's going to, again, sully their well, shield or hurt a, them. They're not under an obligation to give him a job, Chris. The problem is is that make sure you're consistent. Don't bring in folks guilty of domestic violence. Don't give in, bring in folks guilty of rape. Don't give, bring in folks uh, that, that are perpetual violators and what have you and then, t- and then act like that doesn't affect your bottom line, but somebody who is lawful, and as an American citizen, um, uh, uh, you know, exercised his First Amendment rights without doing harm to anyone in the process. Don't punish him while those who have literally done harm to others get a pass. You have to be consistent. That's my position. 
Got to run. I appreciate the call. Sam and Callie, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Sam. All right. So I have a problem with what you said about the Falcons coming out of the NFC. Sure. You said that statement, and then you proceeded to say the Washington Redskins, Dallas Cowboys, and New York Giants. But the one team you did not say, the team that beat the Dallas Cowboys, the team that beat the New York Giants, the team that beat the Washington Man, Redskins. Man, you better hurry up and make your Packers. damn point. What about them coming out of the, the NFC? You know, the, 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 who, who's that? Who are you talking about? Packers, Green Bay Packers. The Packers. I said, listen, I said Atlanta's my favorite. I didn't dismiss anybody. As a matter of fact, what I said is I have no faith in the Redskins because I transitioned from that to the subject of the NFC East because of Ezekiel Elliott's suspension. So I wasn't comparing those NFC East teams as being the biggest threats to the Atlanta Falcons. I made my case about the Atlanta Falcons coming out of the NFC. Then I transitioned to the Dallas Cowboys because of the suspension of Ezekiel Elliott and said, but the New York Giants will win the division because I have no faith in the Cow in the Redskins or the Eagles. I wasn't talking about them being, def- uh, you know, contenders in the NFC. I switched the subject to Ezekiel Elliott's suspension, and the topic was about the NFC East. Period. I wasn't talking about any other division thereafter. Had you listened closely, you would have known. Now you have to wait until tomorrow. Let's go to Dwight and Young because you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go. Hey Stephen A. How you doing, buddy? I'm all right. Real you only quick. got a few seconds. Go um, ahead. I want to joke about Carpenter. Why the Jets? I'm a Jets fan. Why we don't think about it? We rebuild it. Why can't we rebuild with him? They're going to make the argument. Jeff? They're going to make the argument that because they're rebuilding, this guy might actually come in and win games, and that's counterproductive to what they're trying to do. Go ahead. Okay. All right. That's a good answer. And what about LeBron? You know, but um, you only I got thirty LeBron's seconds, bro. Crybaby. You got thirty cry seconds. Baby. LeBron's a crybaby. My opinion on that. He cries too much, and every time he gets what he wants. What about this? Like, what What does that have to do with his tweet about what transpired Saturday in Charlottesville? No, no, that was a good tweet. It oh, okay. was a good tweet, okay. but why didn't he do it? Why didn't he do it the same day it happened? Why did he have to wait? He did do it the same day it happened. He didn't wait. He did it that day. He absolutely did it that day while he was watching it on television. So you're calling him out for the wrong thing, bro. Call him out for the wrong thing. You're not right about that with LeBron. Sorry. We got to get on out of here for the day, but I will be back 22 hours from now, live on the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Enjoy your evening, everybody.